tweet at Saturday RTE. Now, people are facing further price hikes this winter as skyrocketing home heating and lighting bills, petrol and diesel and rental costs drive inflation to its highest level for more than 14 years. We are... um, Household energy costs rose by 10.8% since October 2020. That's according to the CSO. And these rising costs mean some households fear they may not be able to keep up with bills and could potentially be disconnected. I'm joined now by Dr. Tricia Keelty, Head of Social Justice at St. Vincent de Paul. You're welcome to the programme, Tricia. Good afternoon, Katie. Uh, Tricia, are you in in St. Vincent de Paul getting many calls from uh, members of the public now about energy bills? Yes, unfortunately, we are seeing an increase in calls to our regional offices from people who are struggling with their energy bills and also the other cost of living increases that many people are experiencing. So, for example, for the first week of November, calls for help with utilities were up approximately 14% on previous years. And we're not only seeing more people requesting help, but the level of support required and the level of debt people are carrying is greater. And I suppose that's because, you know, over the last 18 months, people may have been on reduced incomes. They've been home more during lockdown um, and they've been consuming more gas and electricity. So people are getting bill shocks as meter reads recommence and the monitorium on disconnections has been lifted. Yeah, uh, just on on that, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, Tricia, on that, are disconnections occurring now since that moratorium on disconnections was lifted in June? So we have um, had to unfortunately support people in in the last couple of weeks who have been disconnected. Um, We don't have up to date uh, data from the regulator in terms of the number of disconnections that are taking place. And from our point of view, it's really vital that we have that information so we can monitor the situation closely and appropriate interventions can be implemented when needed. We also know from our engagements with suppliers that given the current context, um, they are taking a much more flexible approach and we do have the energy engage code so we would always strongly encourage people to get in touch with their supplier if they are struggling because there is options there in terms of payment plans and other supports that can help people get on top of that on top of that debt and of course mabs and svp are also there to help as well but yes monitorium the disconnections monitorium and um other uh, supports such as the energy engaged code don't protect all cohorts of customers so we are really worried about the vulnerability of pre-pay customers particularly as we come into winter um because you know we have issues in relation to people maybe rationing their supply or self-disconnecting and unfortunately it's very common for us to um, support people who maybe have hadn't had heat or light for three or four days because they simply don't have enough to top up the meter. Okay, okay. I want to put that to you, uh, Hildegard Nacht. I mean, we heard shocking stories uh, along those lines in on Liveline this week, uh, people sitting in, in the dark with uh, nothing, no, no ability to cook or turn on the, turn on the light or heat, them, heat their homes. What are we doing for those people as we face into this winter? We need to be very cognizant, and I suppose that's what we had said from in relation to um, our social welfare and social protection budget that we look to protect the most vulnerable and those who are at risk of, of fuel poverty. So just in the uh, budget alone, I know there's three changes made. One is the increase in the fuel allowance to, from €28 Euro per week to €33 Euro per week, but also increasing the threshold, which will bring more people into that eligibility bracket so that they can um, avail of it. And also um, another measure there in relation to those who are on job seekers allowance or supplementary welfare allowance that they'd be able to access the fuel allowance uh, within a, a, a shorter period of time. But like Ireland, we have to continue to monitor the situation. And I know that government are acutely aware of this. We need to ensure that we are protecting um, those most vulnerable, many elderly people, even in relation to our, our national re- retrofit for framework, which is going to be published next year. And I know it's a, a more medium, uh, short to medium term uh, project, but these are the energy efficiency um, measures that government need to support, okay. um, particular sectors who are finding it most difficult, but all also, people who just find themselves outside that okay. income threshold okay, I just, who don't qualify 
okay, we we're, we're all, looking at that. Sorry to cut across you, but we're just we're almost out of time. Um, we're Louis. in the middle of a cost of living crisis, Katie, and the energy, uh, the, the the idea that there are people facing into this winter who are worried and anxious that they're not going to be able to heat and light their homes is absolutely disgraceful. And I do think, you know, at the moment there are measures that the government can take immediately, and this constant reference to uh, to the fuel allowance that doesn't help people who are working, and it's people who are working are going to be put to the pin of their collar. The working poor are okay. not going to be able to heat their homes and it, we have a Minister for Energy who does not seem in the slightest bit interested. He's happy to appoint his cronies to his committees but he is not in the slightest bit interested in tackling this. If we were to the, remove okay. the VAT on uh, domestic uh, energy bills that would be a good place to start. Ivana, the, the moratorium on disconnections. I think we need to look at bringing that back in. I think we need also to do what Labour has committed to doing which is a carbon tax credit to ensure that households that are hit by fuel poverty it's simply not good enough in 2021 that we're seeing this level of, of impact that, that that is addressed and that government take urgent steps to okay. ensure people are not left without heat or without light. We need to address that okay. and the cost of rent as well which is another hugest issue in this cost of living okay, crisis. Okay, that's all uh, we have time for this week. 